Jane, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to be doing the last week, the assembly of the Simply Spring. This is the paper that you should have downloaded by now. And it's pretty simple because we're going to be putting it together with the strips and the four little cornerstones, which are these colors right here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now here's the layout. I went ahead and I put our printer design boards. The first thing that I did to make sure I've got it right is this square here on the top left has the pink flowers down here going downward and that one's going upward, okay? Then we have our square, our four square, and then we have the blue going down and upward, but not the blue square now. This is considered our blue square because of these flowers. This is the other ones, and they're gonna be different colors based on where you cut it with your fabric. Because remember, this is the one that changed, and sometimes it doesn't even look like it belongs together. Now, this one does look like it goes together. It came off the same, but when you come and you look at this one here, this looks like it might even be different fabric than that. But that's okay because that is the same. Like I said, it's where you cut it. So we have the pink here in the right-hand corner and then in the left-hand corner. And then on the opposite corners, we have the one with the blue here and the blue there. And then we have the one single square in the middle. Okay, I rotated this one here. So you're gonna have, starting at the top, pink, blue, white. Well, I should have said pink. It's pink in the top left blue in the bottom right, pink in the top left, blue in the bottom right, and then the opposite for this. Top is blue, pink, blue, pink. So let me back it up a little bit. Of course, now if you all wanna do yours a little different, you can. I can't get any further back than that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two and a half, I mean our two by nine and a half inch rectangles and we're gonna put our little pink squares on it. So that's gonna end up going in the middle. Let's do that first. All right, hopefully that lawnmower won't be too loud. Their neighbors are having their yards mowed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the first one. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew it. I've taken my two by nine and a half inch and I'm attaching it to the square. And then from the square, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other side. So you'll have an idea what it looks like. I think they'll have us iron it inward. I'm not sure. We're gonna see here in a minute. Right. And you're gonna make two of these. So you're gonna have the white and it'll have a block and then the white and a block and the white. And that's what I'm doing right here. I want you to be sure and mark all the blocks that need to be marked. For example, this spot right here needs to be marked. And where the fabric meets, you take your pen, you put it right above it, and then you mark it. This is so that you're not taking the tip off when you put your blocks together. Now, I did this whole thing and my camera shut off. So I'm repeating it real quick. Now, all of these, except this one, is not going the right way. So what I do, because this one's going in opposite direction, I open it up, find the place to put my point, go ahead and mark it totally off the fabric where it opens here, fold it back because that's the way it wants to go and it's been ironed that way. Then I just remark it over that side right there. I'm going to put it right above the two pieces of thread that cross right here and right there. My mark is right here and then I just mark it. If you can see it as you come up along it and you don't want to mark it, that's fine. Mark all four sides on every block. And this is the way I pin it. Now, because I have to see this to sew, I don't want to be sewing it on this side because then I'll miss that. So I put my fabric on the top here and I always start at the top right-hand corner. I'll lay my fabric down. And if I pin it this way, then I'm not picking it up and making it so that my fabric shifts. Then I go to the end down here It's right there, put it down on the table. Pin it in the corner right here. You can always adjust it later. Then I go to the part that I have made my mark on, which is right here and it's in the middle. And I do that one first. And then I either go over here to the right, line up the fabric like that.
and then line it up on the left. And that's it. And now I will sew all the way across this, holding on to it. And let's go ahead and do that. Now, when it comes time to do the next one, which is the four square, I will go ahead and flip it on the back side, just like I did this one. And I'll end up with four pins in it and I'll mark it the same exact way. Even though it doesn't have any markings for the tips, I just want to keep it consistent. And now since I lost that other film, or that other, um, yeah, the other film, so let me go ahead and repeat what I was saying before. When I get finished here, I think I have enough fabric to have a couple of rectangles that are five by two. And I'm going to make a bookmark out of it. I'm gonna make a really simple, easy, fast bookmark. And I still read paperbacks, so I have bookmarks that I like. And then I will show you how I make that so that it's stiff and not a flimsy bookmark. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the next block. And like I said, I pinned it, which you can see here in many a places, but that's all right. And then I've bought some, and which I will show you also, a whole bunch of little, um, I, heck, I don't even know what they're called. I think they're bling is all I can think of, but that's not what they're called. Charms, that's what they're called. Charms, I could not think of the word. For example, let me see if we can see this, I don't know. Here is some charms that I bought to put on the bookmarks. I'm gonna make a few different ones. So I have a whole bunch of charms that I picked up at Walmart. They were between four and five dollars and they were I believe six to eight on a little card or something like that. But anyway, so I have the mirror marked. I always uh, get charms because I never know if I'm gonna put them on a bag, uh, somewhere on a zipper of some sort, whatever you use your zipper for. I just think it makes a little extra on your item that you have. Alrighty, and then when I get done here, I will put these on the design wall so that you can see what I've done. So go ahead and do all of yours up and we'll come back. All right, here's what we have so far. So we have our first block, our second block, and then we're gonna add our third block, which is this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach all of these and then I'm gonna put it on the design board for you. And when you're done doing these, do all three rows the same, and then we're gonna connect the two strips that have our <clears throat> little two inch squares in it. And then we'll get to the outside. You know, when I make my bookmark, I start out with two and a half inch strips. And I believe you can buy a lot of different fabrics on Fort Worth Fabric Studios website. They probably have jelly rows too. If not, you can make them any width and length you want. I'm gonna put that next row on. It's already marked, so you're gonna be careful when you pin it. Here's the third block on the first row we're connecting or I'm connecting. I'm gonna to try to avoid making this video too long. That's my goal this year, try to make them shorter. Unless it's alive, then I don't care about the length or if I'm talking about something, which I'm going to be doing here in a video shortly. But this is the most important block to be making right now today. This is my focus. There we go, over my marked line. You can also get these uh, friction pins from the Fort Worth Fabric Studio, their website. And you can ask any questions on their Facebook page also. There we go. Now let's take a look at it. I'm gonna just put it right out here on this table. Now I have not ironed it, keep that in mind. All right, here we go. First block, second block, and third block attached. Now we're gonna do all of our rows and then we're gonna come back. Alrighty, there it is on the design board. And now we're going to take the white strip with the little cornerstones and we're gonna sew it straight across both rows first. Alrighty, so here's what I've done. I started on this end and I went ahead and pinned it on this side. When I got to the middle, I flipped it because that's where it is marked. Remember we marked it? So between this block, just this right and the left-hand side of the block, this one block, I'm gonna do it on this side. 
and the other two blocks, I'm doing it on the other side. I'm just gonna start at this end, work my way down to the block. When I hit that block, I'll stop, and I'll just skip over that block, and I'll go to the next block. And then when I'm done, I'll come back and get this middle block. same way on both of these strips with the quarter stones on them. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to go ahead and back up before I take that off. Now to flip it over and do the middle block and just start on the corner. Or I'm actually starting on the cornerstone so it doesn't hurt to go over your stitches. It just reinforces them all it does. Okay. Sometimes you might have to go a little bit slower when you go over this part here because it's so much fabric. Now this is the bottom row in case you have not figured that out. I started at the bottom and did the bottom row and now I'll put whoops, the next one onto it. Okay, so that row was actually the middle row, the bottom portion, I mean the top portion of it. So I've taken the top row because it connects to the next row. And so that's where the strip is at, was on the top of the middle row. I don't know how I got that confused. Okay, so now on this side, we only need to do it on one side because it's all has points that we're gonna be careful. The first block and the last block on this top row. Remember we did all this, the four, the four squares in the middle on the top and the bottom rows. out and you're worried that you're you might not keep them avoiding that tip being taken off you can make your stitch to be a basting stitch which is a larger length and stitch because you can come back and go over it when you do get it correct this way it's easier to take out if you're having issues with your eyesight or your you know you got to have a pretty good uh, fresh seam ripper because sometimes those go dull eventually as you use them Take a look at this, and hopefully the one I did not mark was good, and yes it was, I did not take that tip. Let's take a look at it. Alrighty, there is the top two rows done, and now we're going to add the strip onto the bottom. I will go ahead and I'll put it on the bottom, the top of the bottom row, so I'm going to put the strip on this piece right here. We'll add that one afterwards. Now you want to do your sides first, and I have the strip underneath. And I have the all the marked. So I went around before I even put my strip on and I marked every one of my corner blocks that were not marked previously before I even started. And then I'm just doing one side and the other. There's no rhyme or reason to the right or the left side, whichever one you want to do. Hopefully my hands are not in the way. After the top after the sides are done, we'll do the top and the bottom. This is the white strip, which is the first strip. And then we're going to put the colorful slip, strip, excuse me. And then the last, which is the pink, is actually for your binding. So you'll hold off on that until you've got it sandwiched and put together and quilted and everything. did both my sides together but now for some reason these pins like to attack me so I quit doing that. I don't want any of those pins sticking me. I'll just come back and do it. Go ahead and continue with your other side and your top and your bottom then we're going to come back and we're going to look at it before we put the last sashing on there or last strip whatever you call it. Okay so I got to thinking maybe some of the newbies out there have difficulty getting started when it comes to this. So this is the fabric that's, this is the length of the fabric. That's your strip you're gonna put on. And let me show you how I do it. So here's the end of it. I didn't cut off the selvage. I left the selvage on there. So I'm gonna lay it down here. And here's the selvage. 
and here's the piece that we're going to attach and now normally the first thing you're thinking is okay so you'll pin it here then you'll pin it there okay that's not what i do and i will tell you why i go to the third place that i'm going to pin which is over here so i'll pin here first then i'll slowly scoot it out and get it even and go to the next piece and you can see it's got a little pink there so it is marked all right and then i'll go to the edge up here now the reason being, if I had started right here, most times, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna end up with a selvage in there because as I go along here, all of a sudden I'm off. So it's better to go from the right towards the left, which lines this up perfectly on there, and now go ahead and go to the right. Now, if you're left-handed, just do it the opposite direction. Now, don't pull tight on the top fabric, which is the quilt itself, because look at all that give that will distort the fabric and you'll end up with waviness on your binding or on these sashing i should say not binding and then i just gently take it and put it in there lay it down to look to see that it's still straight and then i just slowly move it along and if i feel like for example right here okay now keep in mind that the back strip here also has given it so that's what you're going to be mindful of. You don't want it to all be given because if you do, the next thing you know, you're going to get to the end and it's going to be all stretched out. And then your size is going to be wrong. And I always do it here on the table like this because if you have a habit, and you may notice this, that you take it, you pick it up, and you do this, you go down and over, what you've done is you've pulled your fabric up right here, and it is, let me see, well, you can't, well, I guess you can see a little bit of it, but it pulls the fabric like this, so you end up, let me back it up a little bit, like that, so the top fabric will end up being higher than the bottom, which will be off when it comes time to sewing it. So I always want to make sure that it matches up, and I can see the back fabric, just a little bit of it right there. I can see it right here on the edge as I pin this. And then I'm not pulling it and I'm not lifting it. And it's staying even all the way across the whole entire thing. And then I'm just gonna continue and finish with this. And I'm gonna do both the tops and then, uh, since it's gonna blend in with my design board, I'll just go ahead and start on the sides of the light. I guess the background is a, a light white with the, the leaves on it on mine. Now I'm back to show you how I cut this. So here's the corner. I put my ruler up there and just like that, it comes off and it's done. Flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. I have the fabric inside out. So this is the back part. And you can go right down the fabric like that. My leg is in the way here. Let's take it off like that. There we go. All finished. Now let me take an iron to it before we put the pink on it. All right, there we go. It's on the design board. Totally finished. And I, and I misspoke. It wasn't green. I mean pink. It was the one with the leaves. The green and the blue leaves all over. I guess I looked at the pink that was on the, my design board. But there you go. I think it looks really, really nice. That'd be uh, nice draped over a table, wouldn't it? Or a wall hanging or even a uh, picnic table would be nice too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make a comment if you would like. And I will see you guys next time. But let me show you what I made and explain it to you real quick out of the, um, just a little bit of piece of the fabric from this. Okay, here is the bookmark I made out of the fabric. That's the fa my favorite fabric out of that. And then here's the other. Now this fabric right here with this blue and white, this is actually the fabric. That was those colors that didn't match because they had the green in it too. But this is just one piece of it. And I thought that was pretty nice. Now let me show you what I did was I went ahead and I just cut this square, this uh, rectangle out on each side. And then I put Palin 808 Fusible, okay? And I put it on both of these pieces of fabric. This is fabric from the Fort Worth Fabric Studio from this Simply Bring. And then as far as the charms, these are some cute charms. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to read them. This one says handcrafted. And what I'm going to do, see, you can see some of them say it. 
made for you. Handmade. Here's some really nice charms here. Because if you were to make that, you could put that in your Bible. And here's some with flowers, birds. There's a dove right there. The ones with the cats I showed you already. That's what I showed you. And then last but least, here's some right here. Let's say hope, imagine, dream, inspire, family, beautiful. Now, reading these make me think of the quilts that we make with the Fort Worth Fabric Studio because they inspire us to make quilts. And you can dream about them, imagine. And they're all beautiful, and it brings to mind family when you make them. Okay, so that was it. I just wanted to show you what I made out of a little piece of scrap because I was just thinking about it. Um, I got a, a hardback book that I wanted to read, and I'm also going to read that book, Magic, and tell you a little bit about it. But I thought, well, heck, let's make some of, take some of this great-looking fabric, and it's really nice, but to keep it, to make it stiff, that's why I use the fusible. Otherwise, it's too soft for a book. I mean, you could make a baby book out of this fabric. That'd be good, too. All right, I'll say goodbye to everybody, and thank you very much for watching.